Hello everyone, thanks for taking some time out of your day to visit my channel. Now I'm currently experimenting with a new reaction format where I do the initial reaction, let the song sit, do some deeper analysis and then come back a few days later. So in a moment we're going to go back in time, you'll see my main reaction and if you're interested hang around to the end of the video we're going to come back and do a deeper analysis. See you then. So before we get into this, I just want to thank everyone that watched the first video, uh, so that was my reaction to The Pot, and I was really blown away with just how passionate the Tool Army is, and how many of you uh, said kind words and subscribed, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I'm just amazed to see just how diverse uh, different interpretations of the song are, and people love Tool for so many different reasons, and it, it's really cool to see. Um, now, I was kind of like overwhelmed with how many suggestions and recommendations there were. Uh, clearly, I mean, the, the, what I've really gathered from all of you is that there isn't really a wrong way to do it. There isn't a bad song, so to speak, uh, which obviously speaks volumes about the band. Uh, so I did put it to a little poll recently, and uh, the one that came out on top was Lateralis. Lateralis? Liter... Le... Lateral us? Leviosa? However you say it. Okay, I am super excited after just hearing the one tool song and seeing so much passion and buzz and enthusiasm. I'm so hyped up for the second one. I'm really excited to hear this. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into Lateralis. Take a little pause. Wow, three minutes just flew by. Um, okay, so uh, yes, again, a very. Uh, I feel like both songs have started off quite minimally. They really uh, like that 
drop, so to speak, when everything kicked in. Really caught me off guard because I was turning everything up because it was so quiet. Um, that intro. So when everything suddenly got up to like its regular level, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Such interesting sort of use of sound. Uh, it sounded, I mean, I'm not sure if it's the visual because I'm seeing this, uh, the album cover, which, you know, it looks like a, like the dissected human anatomy. But I felt like I was here, I felt, again, and I made the same comment about the pot, how that first intro, you know, I, I felt like I was inside of his head, like the, the use of the sound was very jarring. And again, we were hearing that almost like a wet sound, sound a bit like a heartbeat. Um, and I think it was just like maybe some triplets, a triplet rhythm that you were hearing sort of fade up very gradually. And when I first heard it, like I thought it was kind of like a rumbling noise. I thought there was someone in the room. I was a bit freaked out. I'm like, oh, okay, that's the song. And I like the production on the on the drums as well. Um, so Danny is doing nothing too crazy, just like driving things along on the, on, sounds like on the floor toms, but it's being panned from left to right fairly quickly, uh, which is really cool. And it really almost feels like you are you are him, you are, you've got drums left and right of you. So that was a very cool uh, sort of atmospheric touch. Um, but yeah, very, again, so it feels kind of pulled back so far. Um, Maynard is not, is very much laid back in the vocals, is very uh, dreamlike and, and hazy. And I, I'm starting to get, I mean, this, okay, I've only heard a song in a bit, but I'm starting to get a feel for Tall and how it's, the music seems to come from very deep within. You have to really give yourself to it, but it's coming from an almost um, subconscious place, which gives it more meaning and significance in a weird way. It's something very, I don't know, it's hard to describe, and I guess that's the whole point. And there's so many ways you can interpret their music, and uh, it all kind of makes sense now. It's interesting doing this now that I've had a chance to connect with you all and hear People saying like, don't try to overanalyze it. Don't try and figure out the the rhythms or the type of signatures because you might just go crazy, but instead just try to feel it. And there's really no right or wrong way. Uh, I'm just gonna do it however I want, but I have a feeling with this one, I do need to just sort of sit back, not be counting measures or anything. It's just let this one wash over me because I can come back and analyze it later. So. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's not pause it too long, but yeah, very cool intro. I'm very interested to see where this goes.
I'm sorry to pause, like this whole, th it, I feel like this is going to be a running theme with Tool songs that it's not a good place, but uh, I need to get one more in. Um, so this song is like, it's like a dream. It's so hypnotic. I apologize if I'm not really being the best reactor or I'm not the most animated right now because I just can't. I just want to close my eyes and drift off uh, and just um, just take let this take me on a journey. It's incredible. I love the, there's a little breakdown where I think the bass was um, sort of circling back to that almost inner body rhythm we were hearing at the start. And I really, again, so much to dissect with, with Danny's playing. Um, because again, like, you know, a simple musician like me, I was thinking, okay, if the bass is gonna do that, and the drums comes, is the drum is gonna come in, then you'll just have the kick doing the same thing. So da 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 But it wasn't, he, he kind of would catch the end of that, but then he would also be filling in space in between. And maybe was it in like a swing rhythm almost? I could be wrong there. Um, but he would have little fills that would lead into that, the start of each measure. So I don't know, it just gives everything so much more depth and intricacy. Like the, the veins I'm seeing on this anatomy seems representative of the different musical lines that I'm hearing. This stuff that's just, each musician is, is breaking off and doing their own thing, but it also is all kind of connected and it's all part of the same body that makes it all work. So it's you know, very clever. And it's, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, just looking at this. Um, but that's how it feels. And yeah, and I, I, you, you knew, even though in the first three minutes or so, Maiden was very held back when he went in a bit more, gave it a bit more grit and some of that power that he has. Oh, it just hits you so much more. You have to be really patient uh, to appreciate this, I feel, and you're rewarded for your, for your patience. You're rewarded for just sort of letting go and getting sucked into whatever is happening here. Uh, something about black and white and infancy and then seeing red and yellow and then I heard overthinking, overanalyzing. Um, so yeah, not too clear. Um, and again, people are like, don't try and overthink the lyrics, just they can make your own meaning. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm still not really sure on the lyrics. Um, something to do maybe with two sides of, yeah, lateralis, so a lateral, I'm not sure that exact, I feel like that's a scientific term, uh, but I'm not sure exactly, but something running alongside yourself, is it like a, a voice that runs along with you and it isn't part of your main consciousness possibly when he's talking about maybe infancy, things were in black and white, things were simple and as you're getting older maybe you learn more but it also means more complications, more voices uh, so to speak. That's just my first impression there. Um, anyway, there's just a couple minutes left so let's take this back a bit and we'll talk more after. <laughs>
Okay, so once again, I'm very glad I'm doing this post-reaction format, and I think it actually is perfect for Tool because it's so hard to get everything <laughs> in one sitting. It's really hard. To, there's so many little details, and you hear them for a second, and then you, 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 you're whisked, whisked away, and you're distracted by the next crazy thing. It's hard to know where to begin, but again, uh, without just trying to repeat too much of what I was saying, you can just feel the time that has gone into it, the complexity, and the way elements and layers are sort of reactive in a sense, and they're always filling in the space. It's not, they're not just following along, playing a certain riff or chord sequence. There's always something happening, and there's so much care into this journey, and I think that's why some people do interpret Tool differently, and like it for different reasons, because it's, it's almost, I don't know how to describe it, it's almost like subliminal art, like they're, they're creating this, they've crafted this, almost like a, a musical space for you to enter and then how you experience that is up to you. You're, everyone's gonna, which is art in general, but I feel like they're really embracing that by in this, the complexity and the way things are done in, again, such a kind of cerebral way uh, that you know, no one person can experience it the same. And it's really fascinating, like, I, again, I was like forgetting I was even doing a reaction at one point, I was sort of closing my eyes and just, and uh, and yeah, so really cool to hear, because I kept seeing um, spiral out in the comments, and like, the first few, I'm like, oh, they just spiraled down the rabbit hole. And it kept coming, I'm like, okay, okay, this must be a tall lyric. And I had no idea which song it would actually be, so I'm really glad it's in the very next one, by chance, it is from Lateralis. Yeah, Spiral Out, Keep Going. Uh, that was a very cool line to, re to repeat, and yeah, it was really interesting. I felt like the, the vocals were very different to the pot. I mean, the pot was, you know, definitely Maynard. Not to say, I was gonna say he's front and center, but that's not really true, because everyone was doing something crazy in that. Um, but I don't know, I felt like he was, definitely in the forefront a bit more and kind of going all over the place. Uh, but I feel like he was more held back here and I think that was probably intentional with this song. The lateral, ask the lateral self. Is that like a play on words there? Um, hmm, there's so much to think about. So I'm definitely gonna have to re-listen to this a few times and I'll give you my thoughts in a few days and see if I am any closer to sort of piecing something uh, cohesive together but I certainly enjoyed it. I mean, oh, when the guitar tone changed, like just before that last pause, uh, it sounded so beefy and there was a really, I mean, that whole last two minutes actually was so interesting. I'm sure there's loads of bits I missed. Uh, the drumming was incredible, it was so captivating. He captivates different sections and carries everything without being too flashy. Like, yes, it's very intellectual and there's a lot of uh, sort of high-end uh, rhythmic composition in there, but it's still not like overly flashy like a lot of metal drummers are and just fast for fast sake for example it just oh, it just grabs you doesn't it and I, in that section as well the bass was doing some really cool stuff justin was it almost like he was sliding down on each note it's like for like two or three notes and then he would hold something before going back into it just this movement that's the thing all these different elements of the song doing so many crazy things and it all somehow kind of ties together and works. It's really bizarre. Um, but yeah, that was really awesome. Um, now I know I've kind of gone back in time, so yeah, I can see why people are saying, you know, maybe go chronological order to see the, uh, the journey of the sound. But I mean, that was still really enjoyable either way. Uh, I don't think I took anything away from this for me. Um, that was such a such an intelligent piece of music. And again, I just love the patience with their compositions. Um, I love the way everything, the dynamics, the way the pacing of it all really just sucks you in. So I guess now we'll cut to future Tom and we'll see what he thinks. Hello again, all right, so we're back in the present day and I've been listening to Lateralis for about a week now. Um, now, this was an interesting one uh, because as you probably saw in the reaction just now, I was very, I don't know how animated I really was, I was just trying to take it all in. And this has been the perfect song for this type of format, I feel, because so much has come to me, so much has clicked afterwards, 
Um, with both of the, like the only two Tool songs I've heard so far, it's been a similar kind of experience and I think that says a lot about how complex they are and the subtleties that they plant throughout their songs and little moments that just, you have a eureka moment a few days later like, oh, that all makes sense now. So this one was definitely like a slow burner, or should I say, a slow spiral. Yeah, the more I listened to it, the more I thought about it, the more it just kind of became ingrained in me. I mean, God, and, and now I'm excited to say, like, spiral out. I can see why everyone was so keen to throw it into the comments. Even in day-to-day -day life, I'm hearing Maynard's voice singing some of the lyrics, like, I'm just reading a newspaper. Or waiting at the traffic lights. Or even watching water spiral down the drain. So the big theme of this, as a lot of you I'm sure know, is the Fibonacci sequence. So a few of you did mention this in the comments, but I purposely tried not to think about it uh, or have that uh, bias going into the first reaction. I really wanted that first reaction to be completely pure, completely blind. Um, so now I've had time to go back to it. Holy shit, like they are so brave to like attempt these kind of concepts and apply it to music. It's amazing, like so many bands and musicians you hear now just sing about mundane topics, breakups or whatever it is. Now you have Tool, just the, the audacity to say, let's make a song about the human condition tied in with the Fibonacci sequence in the most awesome way, and it's brilliant. There's so many details I missed the first time, and I'm sure there's things I'm still missing that just make this an incredible piece of art. So just to touch on it quickly for anyone that doesn't know, the Fibonacci sequence is essentially a sequence of numbers where the previous two adds up to create the next number. So you have 0, 1, 1, 2, three, etc. I was trying to figure out like the idea behind the spiral and I guess it ties into this this golden ratio which is 1.61 or something like that and if you have I'll, I'll put a little diagram because I'm probably going to explain this wrong but yeah if you have like a rectangle and lots of rectangles on the inside and the length of each side is a number from the Fibonacci sequence you can do a spiral that cuts a quarter of each rectangle and it will perfectly fit, basically. So it's an interesting thing. It's, um, I haven't done like a full deep dive or full, I don't have a full understanding, but I definitely heard about the Fibonacci sequence coming up in nature. And I think like flower petals, I believe, many of them, the number is part of the Fibonacci sequence. So it's an interesting thing. It seems very, um, what's the word? It seems very clinical and human made, but it's actually something that happens in nature. So this opens up a whole Pandora's box of topics and conversations, which I'm sure we could uh, do for hours. Um, but yeah, so it was really cool having, uh, like looking into that a bit more and then trying to go back into the song and figure out how they've incorporated it. And again, just like the, the bravery, the guts to do this and the intelligence to pull it off is ridiculous. I just sort of, every, Thing. Every time I pick up something more, I have a bit more respect for these guys. Yes, yeah, so one of the first things I was noticing is like the use of time signatures. And it's funny with the pot that is mainly, I was going nuts trying to figure out what it was. And then some of you told me that most of the pot is actually just 4-4. Four, four, and it's just the way they're playing it that makes it feel different, which just speaks volumes to the, uh, the feeling they have and how they can invoke this uh, sense of time without actually doing anything crazy on paper. Um, but yeah, cause there's like a few sections in this where it goes, like the whole like riff, the whole measure actually changes. It goes like nine, eight, 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 seven, eight, which is bizarre. Like I wouldn't even think to even attempt this, but it does, again, there's so many things that tie into this uh, Fibonacci sequence and the idea of the spiral. Uh, cause to me, like the, the slowly uh, decreasing uh, number of beats within each bar, kind of represents a spiral in a way. It's sort of slowly getting smaller. So that's what I took away from that. And yes, again, it's it kind of a, feel, a sense of falling in a way. Uh, it's, you, you don't, you can't quite get into it at first and it's odd. It's, you, you're not really stable. So again, it kind of ties into this spiral, the spinning down. I'm gonna try something with the structure because I know these videos are very long and hopefully this will help me uh, add some chapters for anyone that wants to skip to a certain part. So I'm actually gonna go, instead of doing the whole song 
in a linear chronological fashion. I'm actually going to focus on uh, one musician at a time um, and we'll see how that works. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start off with Maynard and the vocals and some of the lyrics. And yeah, I'm just going to give you some of my observations and um, yeah, try and talk about how I feel it all ties into the theme of the song and there's just so many instances of that. So yes, one thing I, I've really listened so many times trying to find these little uh, instances of the Fibonacci sequence and there's one that I missed for so long and then I finally realised the opening, the opening lyrics, uh, he's, the syllable of each line is in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's black and white are one, one, two. All I see, three. Uh, so each, yeah, as you know, I'm sure a lot of you know this anyway, but yeah, as you go through each line, the number of syllables matches the, <laughs> the Fibonacci sequence. I'm just like, you, you son of a bitch, I can't believe it, that's so genius. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. What I took from it was, it's almost encouraging you to sort of push your thinking, push uh, your perception, try and think outside the box, try and remove your brain from yourself, so to speak. Creating like another version of yourself to analyze things in a different way from a different perspective. Um, so yeah, I feel like that ties into to a lot of the lyrics here. Yeah, so it's so cool the way they've done that. I just can't believe, it's just so genius the way they've implemented that tiny touch that you would never think of without any context. Probably. I doubt anyone would pick that up, but it's incredible that they've done that and it's just a beautiful little touch. I mean, yeah, awesome line there. That is also another line that just sticks with you. And yeah, kind of ironic in a way, overthinking, analyzing, which is... Well, A, it's something I do a lot already, but it's also something I'm, I'm actively doing with this song, trying to overanalyze and everything. I think they almost want you to. I think that's the whole point. They leave like little, uh, like a trail of clues to you know, help you uh, dig into something. And yeah, separate the body from the mind. Again, kind of removing yourself, taking a step back, remove yourself from the equation. Um, yeah, taking the form of like a lateral consciousness running alongside you. That's what I took from that. Uh, I like the um, the evolution of Maynard's voice as well. Goes from uh, like almost whispering, and then like the, the double track vocal style. It's a bit softer um, compared to the pot, which is all over the place. Um, still not overly strained in these early stages, which I like. It was kind of again, it's why I was sort of thinking so much because I was expecting similar vocal gymnastics uh, with my one song prior experience. So. Uh, it's cool, and because especially when you, it's, it's it's cool when you know a singer can go nuts when they choose not to. It means they're trying to convey something else, and it makes you look a little deeper into just the notes. Okay, if we take it in a bit to about 4:32, just after the solo, uh, yeah, you can feel him giving it a bit more here. I hear the voices expanding, um, and he's so good at taking you on a journey through the songs. <laughs> Yeah, so this is cool because he's saying sort of feed my will, embrace the random, embrace whatever may come. He's sort of amping himself up here. He's trying not to be scared of the unknown and what's intimidating, but he's gonna just go in head first, embrace it fully. So around the 610 mark, I like that he plants the idea of the spiral here. So swing on the spiral. Uh, to me is saying sort of let go. I'm imagining it almost like a like it's uh, a metaphor for like a slide, the slide of life, just just go fall wherever the spiral takes you. Don't be afraid, don't try to have a specific direction. Uh, there's the line of our divinity and still be a human. So it's like we're, we're striving for something above us, which is striving for more, but we are still, it's like acknowledging that we are special, we can achieve special things. Yeah, we can still be grounded and human because these thoughts are running lateral to us, if that makes sense. If we take it to around the 7.30 mark here, we're getting the real crescendo of everything and Maynard is at the end of the vocal journey in this song. A bit of an energy break and then he brings it right back in. Some of the lyrics are brilliant here. Whatever will bewilder me, we may just go where no one's been, spiral to the end. So it's, it's encouraging you. 
You may go somewhere you've never been before. You may discover something no one else has discovered. So it's embracing that fearlessness. Ride the spiral, see what happens. Don't hold back. So yeah, this is the theme and message that I personally took. I can also see how you can interpret this in so many different ways. And I'd love to hear what it means to you lot. Uh, but yeah, that's what I took away from it. And I find it very inspiring and very cool. All right, now let's talk about Adam and his guitar. So yeah, I like that the guitar uh, came in straight for the intro for this one. A lovely simple, nice, riff, like a simple looping riff. Uh, I believe it's in 4-4 at the start, so. Uh, kind of lulls you into a false sense of security, time signature-wise. Like, oh, this is nice and easy. It's a soft riff because there's a lot of open strings um, being played. Like, I, I believe it's in drop D, and yeah, he's playing like a D minor chord, but yeah, he's hitting the bass note, the root note, the D, on um, the first beat. And yeah, the riff itself is sort of hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's very gentle. So this whole intro is great and uh, you know, I already talked about the soundscaping and everything and it's very hypnotic but then the explosion you get uh, at 112 is so brilliant and yeah as I mentioned we're going we then kind of get into this 988878 situation and it's brilliant the way I mean I, I was thinking like without those time signatures I don't think I'm, I'm interested to know I know we already talked about like what comes first, the musicians or the vocals, um, and a lot of you were telling me the band does their thing first, and then they give it to Maynard to sing over it. But I'm also interested to know. I mean, I imagine it's different for each song, uh, but with this one, I'm interested to know which came first, like the drums or the guitar work, because to me, it's almost like okay, we they made the plan to have these moving time signatures, and he made the riff around it. Because that's got to be a lot harder, like us to memorize and play, especially like in a live setting. I imagine myself getting my brain tied up so easily trying to remember all of these. So you need to have little accent to to me. If if I'm imagining myself as Adam and how I'd approach this, I would want little accented moments within the riff, to, almost as like a little reminder, and also as make it a bit easier on the listener. Little moments that say this is the end of the. Um, the measure, the sequence, and he ends this riff with like a like C D, um, and which makes sense. It's a very like normal way to kind of end um, like a drop D style riff on a guitar, and it's just cool. And just I, I try to like put myself into this journey um, from the songwriting perspective. Um, so I hope that all makes sense. So just have a quick listen to that and that that explosion and the way that all sounds because it's such a journey. A little moment that just makes it, to me, it makes it clear like this is the end of the riff and then they go back into the 9-8 the again. It's, it's interesting to think about their perspective and you know, how to approach it. And I feel like this is a great songwriting trick. A good way to think outside the box, I think, would be maybe set up a, like a looping sequence and purposely add in different time signatures and see how that changes your, your writing style. It's something I actually really want to try. Because I feel like if you just have 4-4 four, four, and you're playing to a click the whole time, you, you end up going back to the same old tricks, the same old sequences that you subconsciously fall back on. So uh, this is a great way to mix things up and it's, I think, interesting. It's sort of groundbreaking both for the musician and the listener. Okay, now maybe I am overanalyzing. But the first solo, um, the, the kind of lick he's playing at first, I'm pretty sure he's on the D string and playing open, Three five open three five. I could be seriously overthinking and overanalyzing, but again, zero three five rule in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, maybe that's what he was thinking. Maybe it just sounded cool. Um, so let's take it to. Uh, I want to go to the next solo at six forty. So one of the observations I made during the pot was that uh, everything was quite stripped back in terms of effects, um, and it was very raw. Uh, now this is still uh, a similar style, but they've been a bit more creative with the effects, which is cool. 
Um, there is a lot of wah and delay and effects that really fill up the space in this one. Um, so yeah, last time they seemed very conscious of the empty space, which is very important. But uh, I like here that it's a bit thicker, it adds to the, uh, the wall of sound almost. So with these extra effects, I feel like they're tying into the theme of things being a bit more crazy and expansive and embracing the madness. It's really cool, like I'm not sure if they've actually recorded something extra, but yeah, you, hear, you almost hear like, the, I'm not sure if it's the delay from the initial um, dry recording, but yeah, it almost, almost sounds like there's two guitars running laterally there. Um, so yeah, that's what I thought there, a nice little production trick to uh, tie into the whole theme. And yeah, so the moment uh, around 7.17 where everything cuts out and it's just the guitar, ugh, it just sounds so thick and creamy, it's so good. And I'm pretty sure it's, it's sort of heavily double tracked in that moment. So um, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, it's pretty common to double track guitars because even if you are virtuoso god, no one can play the same thing exactly the same both times. So just double tracking it and panning both sides uh, gives just a bit more thickness to it. Uh, maybe I'll do a little demo now. So if I quickly show you um, just on my own software here, if I play this chord once, so first you'll hear it, just the guitar by itself, panned in the middle. And now let's try recording it the same thing again. And we'll pan them both, left and right. So it still sounds like one instrument, but you're almost surrounded by it. That stereo sound, it just really gives it so much more thickness. And yeah, it, like by cutting out all the other instruments as well, it really solos in on that and it's such a cool moment. Okay, now let's talk about Justin and his bass. So uh, yes, yeah, so the first point I've noticed is uh, 151. Um, sort of planting the seed of this riff and there's a lot of development and evolution with the bass parts as well which I really appreciate. So let's quickly listen to the introduction of that riff. Something we experienced with the pot as well uh, which I really appreciated is the guitar and bass not always playing unison like so many bands, myself included when I write stuff, usually the bass and the guitar are playing pretty much the same thing. Uh, but I like that there's overlapping layers in this um, to keep you entertained and keep your mind going, keep your mind spiraling. Um, so when the guitar comes in, it's different, but then around the 217 mark, uh, it actually joins the guitar. So again, these this kind of weaving layers that like drift off and then they come back together. So let's just keep going here. Guitar is different here. And then the bass will join it in a second. It's so cool. And also, and obviously, uh, Danny is doing a little uh, trick there as well. He's the moment when everything comes together, the do 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 do. The everything comes in there, so it sort of signals. The, uh, the parts all joining it together in unison. So we had the basic riff a moment ago. If we take it to around 310, he brings it back in, but this time he's sort of adding in a slide, which again adds in um, sort of movement and ties into the theme of the spiral. And it's a cool development and it contrasts well with the drums, which are kind of very stable in the background. There's so many little themes that they keep tying back to and it just shows how much care they've put into everything in the whole journey. Now that um, ongoing theme of developing the theme is comes back again and you get even more of that sliding effect. Now I'm doing that because I assumed the whole time it was on like maybe on a fretless bass or just 
being very good with his technique to get that sliding effect. But I tried to find like a live video. So I think he was actually using uh, like, a, like a pitch shifting pedal to go down. So very cool. And that might be why it sounds so smooth. Yes, yeah, so we take it to around the 805 mark. Um, so here we have the bass, the guitar, um, kind of coming together a bit more and tying into this theme of the vocals. So you've got the sliding, um, and you've got some like melodic octaves, and it's tying into that um, the the melody that Maynard has. So it's a cool little moment again where the three elements sort of tie together. And of course, Danny is driving the whole thing and keeping it together and doing lots of little touches. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the drums and I will apologize in advance for any uh, drummer, percussion, rhythm enthusiasts. Um, this is probably the uh, area where I have the least input. This is uh, what I know the least. I, I play guitar, I play drums, I sing, but I play drums like animal, like I'm just a mess. <laughs> So um, yeah, I'm still I'm still learning on this front, but I'll try and give you what I uh, picked up, and hopefully it's interesting to some of you. Uh, but yeah, again, um, something I really loved was the almost sounds like panning in the the black and white are that like five eight section. Now I'm not sure if it's like digital panning. Uh, maybe I'm just so used to using MIDI that that was my first thought. It could just be microphone placement. Um, I wonder if any of you know, but yeah, uh, I assume in a studio you've probably got at least two, probably more um, mics set up in the room so you can sort of pan the microphone, like the dry microphone uh, output itself to give you that 3D space. Uh, but however they've done it, uh, it sounds really awesome. So um, yeah, I've already talked about a few of like the rhythmic parts of the song and again, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing so many things, but um, yeah, so if we take it to around the 456 mark, around this, this kind of breakdown, um, yeah, he plays the hi-hat, and now this time it, the hi-hat is fully panned to one side. Um, I'm not sure what the exact rhythm is, again, this is where my um, rhythmic ignorance comes in, uh, and I couldn't tell you exactly, but I can tell you that it does seem to contrast with the guitar and bass, um, which Again, full ties into things being just slightly off kilter, just takes you off balance a little bit. It's cool because the other elements, like I believe that section is 4-4 four, four for the other instruments. Um, but what he's doing is slightly different and yeah, almost like that rhythm is sort of spiraling around the regular 4-4 four, four, and it all, again, keep saying the same thing everything sort of ties in together nicely it looks like it all it all meets at the bottom of the spiral another cool moment around 540 says feel the rhythm and Danny brings the kick drum in yes yeah, so let's have a listen to the drumming in the guitar solo I don't have anything that intelligent just to say other than it's just so cool it's so hectic and shocking in a way It all sounds so well controlled yet still hectic and kind of such discipline to play like that and the, the fills are so interesting and tasteful. And after this, things are very simple again. Much more spaced out, driving the rhythm. Great use of like dynamics, light and shade. All right, well that's pretty much all the notes I made. Um, I hope that was interesting. I hope that wasn't too long and you guys all enjoyed that. Yeah, ride the spiral down because like the Fibonacci sequence, there is like an underlying logic and reason to everything. And you know, not, not necessarily in like a spiritual sense, although I'm sure 
many people will have taken that away from this. Um, yeah, there's like a there's a weird, uh, unexplainable magic and beauty in everything in nature in the whole universe. So um, with that, there's no right or wrong way to explore it. There's no right or wrong way for you to try and achieve whatever it is, enlightenment, knowledge, uh, success. And in the same vein, you can kind of say that about the way you approach the song. There's no right or wrong way to spiral into this song and interpret it. So it's very, to me, that's like a very clever double meaning that they've got going on there. And yeah, I, it's funny after all this research and like hard thinking and analyzing, I've still kind of arrived at that same initial conclusion. And yeah, with Tool, it's from the two songs I've listened to so far, it's like they, they put the ball in your court. They challenge you and then you're part of it. You're part of that like musical journey uh, you're part of the meaning, you define the experience, and it's really cool. And uh, again, yeah, you can argue that's the same with any music, with any art form, but I feel like Tool definitely really embrace it, and they want to challenge you and sort of send you on a journey, so to speak. And yeah, I've heard two songs, and I feel like I've definitely been on a massive journey already, so um, we'll wrap that up there because um, I know this video will be long by now. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. If you've hung around for the whole thing, thank you so much. Again, really appreciate everyone in the Tool Army uh, who've been ultra supportive and kind. Um, now the next uh, conundrum I have is where to go next. Um, so yeah, I may go back to some of those ones I put in the poll. Um, but yeah, let me know if you, if you have. I, I feel like I've still, I can tell I've only just scratched the surface and I know Tool have a lot more to offer, so. I would love the next one to be something really crazy. I want to have my mind blown. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure. Let me know what you think would be a good one to do next. Let me know what this song means to you. And I'm sure there's loads of things I missed and little details and moments of genius. So definitely let me know in the comments as well uh, anything in this song that you think is cool. Uh, anyway, thank you again for watching. Uh, if you want to support me, just hit the like button or subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And until next time, you take care of yourself.